Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, we are working on our moonlit curling sheet. Uh, in this video we're going to finish up this bottom part and then there will be an additional video for the actual gameplay. Okay, so during the break you should have gotten yourself fresh water, washed out your paintbrushes, and been ready to go for next steps. Alright, <clears throat> so let's talk about the ice. So the ice is not going to be like when you have, you know, your actual curling club ice. It's not pristine. It's not going to be super white. Again, you've got a nighttime sky and you've got the reflection of that nighttime sky on the water. So it's going to be very, very dark. Um, honestly, if you want to, you can use that original purple that we made for the sky if you have enough of it. And if not, you can go ahead and make very similar to that, uh, that color. So I'm going to actually go ahead and make more of that color in that same spot. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit more blue than purple this time, but again, I'm gonna pull it. And when I pull, I'm literally like pulling paint. Add a little bit of water to my paintbrush because I can feel that my paint's dried out in the break a little bit. And then I'm going to mix these together. There's no harm and there's no, it's not a bad thing to have to remix your paint a few times to get the color that you want. So I'm adding a little bit more white to get the color that I want. And again, mixing those colors together. So now I've got a ton of paint on that back of my paintbrush. I'm actually just going to kind of twist it until a lot of it comes off. And I know, again, I need to add a little bit more water to my paintbrush, to my painting area, so that it'll flow smoothly. Put that back over here in my holding area. And let's go ahead and start painting. So just like we've been doing, we want to outline around our objects and then go back and fill it in. If you need to transition to a smaller paintbrush to get around some of your details, go for it. Always use the size paintbrush that you feel most comfortable using. Just realize that the smaller the paintbrush, the longer it's going to take you to paint because of literally surface area. So outlining around everything that you've already painted. And I gotta remember to paint that moon in later. I'm notorious for being terrible about going back to stuff. So right now you're going to be like, well that's a really stark contrast between those. We can actually go back later on and add some details to kind of make some of those areas darker and seem less flat and more three dimensional. Again, remember outline around everything. And as objects get farther away they get lighter and as they get closer to you they get darker and more rich with color. the human eye can pick up more colors closer to you. So if you have a darker patch, you can use kind of that darker patch in the front. And when I'm saying darker patch, I mean in like when you were actually mixing your colors together, you had a darker area of paint that didn't quite get totally mixed in. You can always go back and use that darker paint like I'm using right now in the front and save the lighter paint for the back. Outline around your houses. And remember in your house, this second ring in would normally be white. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that that same color as the ground. And you'll want to do that in the back house or the far house as well.
Again, if your paint's not flowing the way you want it to, add a little bit of water, kind of mix it around. And straighten out some of those edges. And that's my text message noise. My apologies. That one's not my best attempt with such a large paintbrush, but I can go back and when I paint the actual color of it, I can smooth it out a little bit. All right, so now that I have everything outlined, I can go ahead and fill it in. I like to make sure that I overlap areas that I've painted before to ensure full coverage. If when you're picking up colors, you pull up some other colors and pulling up some red from the corner of my pile, it's okay. It's just natural variations that are happening. So we got some flat color in there, but we really don't have much interest. So I'm going to mix a little bit of darker. I just have straight blue on my paintbrush right now. On the undersides of these kind of banks. And I'm just kind of laying them down in there. I'm not actually blending them yet. But then I'm going to go back, wash out my paintbrush. It's not a thorough washout. I just want to get that blue off, and then with a little bit of water still on my paintbrush, I'm going to mix those together so it looks a little bit more three-dimensional. I can do the same thing around the houses. There's not really a shadow that would be behind the houses, but sometimes it's one of those things that your brain wants it, so you should just kind of add it. Okay, mix it in now add a little bit more to this front one. And then I'm going to again add some of those blues to areas in this front section that the moonlight would be able to get to, adding a little bit of that darkness. Then I'm going to add a little bit of that darker blue right here on the edge where the moon wouldn't be able to get to by the mountains. I'm going to mix a little bit into those edges. Okay, so I'm going to finish blending this in and then we're going to add the highlight that the moon creates on the ice. So go ahead and wash out your paintbrush and using pure white while your paint is still wet, we're going to create the ripple effect. I am going to transition to my flat paintbrush, make sure it had water in it. I'm taking a little bit of that paint and I'm just kind of dabbing it around my paintbrush. And then notice where the paint or the moon is. And then you're going to kind of just horizontally bring in that light. And again, we're doing that dabbing motion that we've done here. We can get more paint if you need it. Brighter up here. And I don't want my paintbrush fully loaded, that's why I tap it off inside of the, the paint tray. And it's not going to fully go exactly with the, um, the sheet of ice. I'm going to flip my paintbrush over and use the paint that's on the back side. And it's not really going to get larger as it gets closer, so be careful because I already see that I'm trying to make mine larger so I can just take that background color kind of paint over areas that didn't quite do exactly what I wanted them to do. Okay. 
And if you want to add this onto the extra houses, or onto the house as well, later on, you can do that as well. Like onto the actual house color. So now we're going to go back um, and I'm actually going to paint in my moon now. I'm washing off that paintbrush, picking up my white, and I'm going to paint in the white of my moon. Um, there's a very good chance that your moon will need two coats of white, depending on what kind of paint you're using, all of that. So be careful when using a flat paintbrush to paint a round area. Sometimes it works really, really nicely, and other times you're like, why isn't this working the way I want it to work? So, if you need to, transition back to the round paintbrush. Because round paintbrushes like to paint round areas. And there we go. And now I'm also going to add my clouds up here. So again, using that same technique that we used down here. I'm just going to kind of tap them in. My paint's still a little bit wet, so I'm picking up some of the color from underneath, which personally I like. I think it adds a little bit more depth or interest to my picture. And I don't want pure white clouds here, so mixing them with other colors, especially in the nighttime sky, is, is very visually interesting. I'm going to add a little bit more purple across the moon, otherwise I think it looks kind of out of place. There we go. And yes, whispering to your painting does help. Don't let anybody tell you differently. <laughs> Alright, so I'm happy with those. Done with my clouds. You can always add more later. And now let's go and paint the actual houses. So this is, I'm definitely going to use a smaller paintbrush here. Um, if it's the first time you're using a paintbrush, wet the paintbrush. And then this is your house. So, you know, your clubhouse might be red and blue, but, you know, if you, you're, you know, so you know a lot. If your spouse and you, uh, or your partner and you um, have favorite colors and you want to paint those favorite colors instead of the colors of you know your home club go for it it's your house and it's your painting and you get to decide what colors you want them to be if you visited another club and you're like oh they have the purple houses you know they have the purple rock candles and you've always wanted those for yours then make you know this is your opportunity just like we have been doing we're going to outline and fill in I'm sticking with my clubs original colors um, don't forget to paint your button I forgot to paint my button on this one So if you plan on painting the actual game, so a curling match, um, you're going to want to let this dry for a little bit. So take a break, you know, go refill a drink, um, get a new snack, go to the bathroom. Give it a little time to dry. If you have a ceiling fan, um, turning on the ceiling fan is a good idea, a little space heater, whatever you've got around to kind of help everything dry in the house 
is, is a good idea, especially because we just painted the house. So it gives it an opportunity to actually finish drawing. Now's the time to fix any of your lines if you made mistakes earlier and overpainted something. club's inner rings are uh, red, but I'm actually going to bring a little bit of that purplish color into my red house because I don't want it to be pure red because then it's going to look like it's a daytime red instead of the nighttime red that I'm going for. So a little bit of blue mixed in, darken it up just a touch. A little bit darker than I was expecting. Are planning on, but I think it's actually ultimately the right color for what that red would look like at night. If your paint looks very thin, there's a very good chance that you didn't dry off your paintbrush in between going into that color. Just accidentally painted over my whole button. Um, so what you can do is just dry off your paintbrush and go into the color in a different area. So that one area that you've just gone into it is going to be the area that has all of that white on it. All right. So go ahead and paint your button, and then we'll see how to add some more details to this in just a few minutes. All right, everybody. See you soon.